Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Gaurav Shivastav, Associate Professor, School of Advanced Computing, Sage University, Bhopal. Our today's topic is constraint-based association mining from the course Data Mining and Warehousing. So constraint-based association mining is a data mining technique that uses constraints to reduce the search space for finding association rules. Constraints can be used to specify the minimum support and confidence thresholds, as well as the items that must be included in the rule. Constraint-based association mining is a more efficient approach than exhaustive search, as it can quickly find rules that meet the specified constraints. This makes it a good choice for large data sets. Here are some benefits and limitations of the constraint-based association mining. If we talk about the benefits of constraint-based association mining, it is more efficient than exhaustive search. It can be used to find rules that would otherwise be missed. It can be used to find rules that are more relevant to the user's interest. Here are some of the limitations of using constraint-based association mining. It can only find rules that meet the specified constraints. It can be difficult to specify the correct constraints. It can be difficult to interpret the results of constraint-based association mining. So here are some examples of constraints that can be used in constraint-based association mining. The first one is minimum support threshold. This constraint specifies the minimum number of times an item set must appear in the data set in order to be considered frequent. So if we are taking this uh, constraint, we have to specify the minimum number of times that an item set can be appeared in the data set so that the item set can be considered as a frequent item set. Second is minimum confidence threshold. This constraint specifies the minimum probability that an item set will be purchased together given that one of the items in the set has already been purchased. Third is item constraints. This constraint specifies the items that must be included in the rule. So here we are giving the particular item that this item should be present in the rule. Fourth is non-item constraints. This constraint specifies the items that cannot be included in the rule. So here we are giving the items that should not be included in the rule. Thank you. Stay tuned and subscribe to Sage University Bhopal.